two, one, go. Revisit in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have to once again, that is to come to you, that is spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ through the Joseph Combo Avenue Church of God. God has been so good to us, and I know that everybody that's out there, that's in our congregation, are glad to be in the service at least one more time. I want to read that is uh, in your hearing. That is, and this is the scripture I will embark upon. That is First uh, Thessalonians 5 and 18. It says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now don't look at somebody and say it's Thanksgiving, but I think Thanksgiving will be every day. Am I right? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again. This is another week. This is another time. This is a place in time. Lord, without we can live for you. We can witness for you. We can tell our own story and share our faith. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless us. Be with us one more time, God. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Linda Johnson is going to be our song for the day. She's going to come to you at this time.
the thing about it is the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We need to pray and we need to keep on praying. And we're praying that the pandemic would end one of these old days and that we can all go back. That is to our regular godly routine and that is coming into the sanctuary where many churches are still going. Uh, have, have never stopped going to church and many have, but we're praying that that day can come. Amen. We know that there are many prayer requests out there because there's other things going on besides the pandemic. And a lot of people have a lot of things that is to pray about. And we're going to pray today. And we're going to ask God that is to bless us. To bless every last one of us. Sister Linda is going to come with a prayer song. And after that, we're going to ask Brother Ted Henry and he can come and lead us to the throne of grief.
Let me say it again. Now, you want the benefit of it. Yes, you do. But you don't want the responsibility of it. Amen. And, and, and you want the ability that is to be free. You want freedom. You want to be free to benefit of it. But not the responsibility of protecting your freedom. You want freedom, but you're not going to protect freedom. Am I right? You want the responsibility of liberty, but you do not, uh, want, or you're not willing to do anything, amen, with the liberty once you get it. Am I right? It, it, it is when you want the access that is of the resources, but you're not going to do anything to earn the resources. You understand? And then entitlement is not like something you vote on. It's not a policy or something that you vote on in government. But we are not, uh, no, we, we are not, no doubt, and, and uh, believe it or not, a people who should be entitled to everything. And not only that, but we are no doubt, but surrounded by nothing but what? Entitlement day by day, day by day, month by month. And we cannot recognize it because it's like the pandemic is in the air. Believe it or not, there's so many people I meet and they claim they're, they're, they're children of God and they actually believe that they are entitled to everything without doing anything. Believe it or not, I'm so glad that God told us that if you want some things done, you got to do something yourself. He said, if I abide in you and my word in you, it seems like to me, you got to do something. You see, you got, if, if you abide in me, now let me say it the right way, get in my word in you, he said you got to do something first. And this is the problem when it comes down to entitlement, believe it or not, it's in the air, amen. And all things great and small, we feel like we deserve something more than what we have in our hand. There's something coming down the road that belongs to me, believe it or not, and I want it at this present time. So now today we're going to talk about entitlement, entitlement. Well, a lot of theologians and preachers and teachers, believe it or not, they look at entitlement as being a disease. It's like a disease, believe it or not. And I see it all over America, everywhere I go. Amen. It's a spiritual disease, amen, in which the individual believes that privileges or rights or benefits are to be what expected as a matter of rights. It belongs to me. That's just all there is to it. You understand? Are, are you expected, uh, uh, just, just expect everything to fall in your hands and fall in your lap? I'm, what, I'm entitled to all of these rights, believe it or not. And then many young people today, they actually feel that way. I talk to young people that say that, you know what I mean? I don't like doing chores around the house. I don't like taking out the trash. I don't like cleaning up my room. A lot of them are not grateful. They feel like their, parent, their parents, excuse me, owe them something, believe it or not. You see, rules don't apply to me. You understand? And the more successful we are, you understand, the more we have the a tendency to think that the rules don't belong to us. You know what makes me sick on my stomach? A pro ball player getting a hundred million dollars in five years, and he's missing practice. Does that make any sense? That make no sense at all. He feels as if he is entitled, or she feels like they are entitled that is for something. And you look around and there are people that don't have enough money to eat. Okay. Okay. Am I telling the truth, you all? They feel like they are entitled. That is, they believe in entitlement. Believe it or not, entitlement says that you don't know who I am. You understand? Entitlement takes ownership. It belongs to me. It is mine. Believe it or not, you understand? What about laziness? Laziness. And we should not teach our children that is to be lazy. We should teach them to do what? To work. To work. Amen. What about I want it? You understand? Everybody else has it. I want it. But guess what? I want it now. You need to get out of your bed and go get it for me now. I want it now. Amen. And here's the one that I hear all the time. Amen. I expect everybody else to fix my problem. I want to fix my life. I see all that stuff on television. Fix me. Fix me. I need to be fixed. You hear that all the time. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen. They want happiness, but they want happiness their way. They don't want it the right way. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Entitlement is real. And then most of us, believe it or not, we 
have embraced this at one time or another. We know something about the danger that is of entitlement. Now, I was invited once upon a time, and I never shall forget this, to uh, a revival, a revival. And, and it was a, uh, a large one. I, got to, I, I have to admit, you understand? Now, the place I was staying was not that, that up to date, let me just say, all of that. My larger wasn't, wasn't the best in the world, you understand? But it never bothered me. It never bothered me. It never bothered me. You say, why? Because I never complain because humility comes from the heart of God. Amen. And I actually believe that I'm not entitled to anything. One more thing. They didn't bring you there so you could live in the best room. You can stay in the best room they would. They brought me there to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You missing, you missing the whole point. If you're worried about your living in, uh, uh, situation and all of that, you understand? The next uh, day, somebody came and moved me. I don't know why. You understand? But they took me to another place. That looked like the Rockefellers were staying there. You understand? But I never felt entitled that is to anything. When you feel entitlement, amen, you would want special treatment. And a lot of people want special treatment even in the church. I'm talking about entitlement. Amen. If you got it in your heart, you sit up in the church with it. Am I right about that? Special treatment, special parking. You understand? I want to park in the VIP. I am a VIP. I want my name on the door. Am I right? You see, I want y'all to sing my special song when I get to church. You understand? I got a special seat I'm sitting in. I'm not going to walk downstairs and get what you have. I'm special. Bring it to me. Why do we feel that way? Guess where I learned all of this from the church? Because I'm looking around the church. Yeah? And you got people that actually think, please, please, let's save our children. Let's save our children if we don't save anybody else from this mindset of entitlement. Amen. But Acts, Acts, Acts teaches us in Acts 20 35, it says, it says uh, to, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. But they never did eradicate the idea of receiving. We have to learn how to receive without this, this mindset of entitlement. So I ask yourself, have I developed an entitlement mentality? Amen. You see, I have read about children who sued their parents. Y'all ever read about that? You ever hear about that? Yes, you have. You understand? They actually sued their own parents. The people who brought them into the world. One man said that one child got a birthday card from their parents, and because there was no money in it, he sued them. Oh, Amen. Please, no. if it's in your heart, if it's in your heart, Get this spirit of entitlement out of your heart and it will be out of the church. So now, we think that we are what? We entitled that is to what? Let's go over it real quick. Especially inheritance is one, promotions, high paying jobs is one, but most of all, they want and everybody wants a trouble free life. It ain't gonna happen. Let me be the first one to tell you. It ain't gonna happen. How many of y'all know a trouble Free life. God never promised you a trouble-free a trouble-free life. He said, "Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver you out of all of them." Amen. What about happiness? Happiness. Happiness. You understand? I heard a man said to a little in the Constitution of the United States said that what it states that I have a right to happiness to pursue it. Have a right to pursue happiness. You know, we live by that kind of stuff. But let me, let me, let me hear you. No decree, no precedent, amen. No man-made rule, no piece of paper, no constitution of the United States can guarantee you happiness. Ain't gonna guarantee you no happiness now. Amen. Check out some of these people that that been married 30 years. That's them, are you really happy? Oh, well, let me leave that alone. I didn't know. So they even said that. Amen. The two things I learned that is as a child, you got to develop, you got to mature. You got to mature. You can't stay in one place. I see people all the time, they refuse to grow up. They still sucking their finger, they still holding on the nursery rhyme, they still afraid of the dark, dragging an old nasty dirty blanket around. You need to grow up. Immaturity is not gonna help you. 
If you're a grown man or a grown woman, you need to go up and up to. Somebody needs to tell you that nobody owes you nothing. And people do not exist for you. I declare you know. Well, what you gonna do when they dead up? You dependent upon your parents? And you playing this entitlement game? Well, what are you gonna do when they when they dead and gone? Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? We, we need to be real careful about this thing. And you see, I'm entitled to uh, uh, whatever uh, sex I choose or whatever car I want. I probably should have said that, but anyhow, it's the truth. That's what, that's where we are, and that's where America and the church is at right now. We need to get rid of the spirit of entitlement that is in the church. We have a mindset that needs to be corrected. You'll understand. Entitlement breaks, uh, 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 how can I say it? Entitlement, uh, a girl told me I'm entitled to bring anybody to my parents' house I want to. You understand? My grandma told me I own that house. I'm going to bring my boyfriend in and sleep there on the weekend. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. That's entitlement. Entitlement. You understand? I'm entitled to have a wig at Joseph Campo Avenue Church of God. Why? I don't go there, I go to another church. You understand? Oh, you understand? Oh, I don't go to any church at all. But my great uncle on my mama's side, you understand, bought some curtains for the church in 1904. So I'm entitled to have my wedding there. And not only that, but guess what? The fellowship all belongs to me. And if I want to preach out, I'll get him to. I'm trying to tell y'all the truth. And unless somebody stop the spirit, it's a spirit. It's in families. I've seen it. You understand. But people who, who believe in entitlement, I've learned that they're very, very unhappy. Uh -huh. and, and, and if you want to be miserable, all you have to do is develop this kind of mentality. But instead, develop a, a what I call, instead of developing a, what I call an entitlement mentality, all you have to do is to just take these two words, be grateful. Uh -huh. mm. yes, sir. That's all you got to do. Yes, sir. Be grateful. Am I right? Grateful. Amen. Grateful and gratefulness is in what? An attitude that says that I don't deserve what I have, but it's only by the goodness, the grace, and the power of God. I woke up this morning and I got a sense enough to know it's only by, by the goodness of God Amen. that my heart didn't stop beating in my sleep. But when are you going to be grateful about anything? About the life? You understand? When are you going to be grateful about God's giving? And when he give it to you, I don't have to have what everybody else got. I don't have to be jealous of what everybody else got. But I can thank him and be grateful for what he has given unto me. So gratefulness is an attitude. Amen. Thankfulness is an expression of the gratitude, believe it or not. Just, just learn how to be grateful. Amen. See, when you say thankful, thank you, excuse me, when you say thank you, it makes room for more. That's what it does. The songwriter said, count your blessing. That's all you got to do. Sit up and count your blessing. Say to yourself, I was in the, uh, the hospital, went on the anesthesia, stayed there two weeks, and it don't, I don't even feel like I've been in the hospital. Right. Just be grateful. Just be grateful. First Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything, he said, be grateful. Give thanks. Give thanks. But this is what the will of God. Now, now being thankful don't mean that you just got free and you thank Amen. From the first century, it said that this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you when you have the worst of times and the best of times. You see, it's very hard to thank people. I'm mean, excuse me, to thank God when you're going through a pandemic or situation like we're going through. Psalms 35, 18, it says to give thanks to in front of a great congregation. The Bible says, I will praise thee among many, many people, and I will give thanks and declare it publicly. You just thank God. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You're like the athlete, say, I thank God that he uh, uh, really, really blessed me, and not only that, but giving me a body. I'm a walking corporation. You understand? I make millions of dollars. First of all, I want to thank God, and then I'll answer your question. Right. Right. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with declaring that? And lastly, I'm a recipient of God's grace. Amen. You see, in other words, uh, I get it uh, that, that, that um, I have to do 
but surrender my rights to God and remember God's mercy, his goodness and his grace toward me. Just be grateful. That's all. Amen. So you equip for, uh, 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 for fighting many things, but I want to ask you a question. Are you equipped for fighting the spirit of entitlement? Amen. Give thanks in all circumstances. Be grateful. Amen. You give people stuff, they don't want to say thank you. Right. Oh, they they go about their business. Thank you. You know, you gave it to me. You needed to give it to everybody. You needed to give them some or need to, you know what I mean? You see, are you equipped to fight this thing? This thing they call entitlement. And then give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. And don't you forget, ever forget what God has done for you. Count those blessings. Yeah. You understand? Don't ever forget. He has given us much more than we deserve. Yeah. Believe it or not, he has. Yeah. He's given us much more than we deserve. And I always count my blessings. I remember when there was a guy that showed snow uh, uh, and, and wrote it off on his income tax. What, two or three years of the At least. Amen. People have come and fix the, uh, uh, what, the downstairs furnace and stuff and say, we don't charge you anything. Count your blessings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all you got to do. Count your blessing. And then never compare your blessing with everybody else. You can't do that now. Don't compare what you have and what God is doing, your testimony with anybody else. Amen. God needs to change the mind and hearts of people. And we need to know what it is just to be grateful. Stop grumbling. And just be grateful. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I got to go, but we need to ask God to do what? To move this mindset. It's coming into the church. Believe it or not. You see, how many of we need to get, get that spirit out of our midst? Because I learned that for every cross, believe it or not, there is a crown. For every sickness, there is a cure. For every mountain, he'll bring you over. Every valley, he's brought me. Every storm, he sweeps, swept out, and got me out of it. Believe it or not, every problem, God has allowed. Amen. You can do what to hurt them. You ought to be thankful and grateful. Look what he done for your children. And how he blessed not only your children, but your children's children. Just show, show some feelings sometimes. Show some feelings, some feelings of appreciation, kindness. Be thankful. Amen. Don't let entitlement be your portion and poison that is your life. Don't let it, you know, and, and this thing has gotten the best of a lot of people, of a lot of people, be, just be grateful, believe it or not. I know a real story, I know a real story where a young man, he got drafted to one of the NFL teams, and he actually believed that he was just entitled to be on the first string. They put him on the practice team, and guess what he did? He quit. He quit. Because people feel that way. You understand? But the friend shall be last. Lord have mercy. And the last shall be first. You don't know nobody. And sometimes God is saving you for a greater thing. If you would just wait on it. Father, we thank you. The spirit of entitlement. It's in people's homes. It's all in uh, a lot of companies and organizations. You understand? The church is all in politics. We see it every day. Remove it, God. Please remove this out of our midst. We thank you for your grace. Grace don't belong to any individual. Same grace save you, save me. Same grace save somebody over at somebody on down the river at that church. Lord, teach us. Please help us when it comes down to the spirit of entitlement. Because what we don't know is creeping in on us. It's like a boat without an anchor. We're going to look up one day and we're gonna, we would have floated way out into the sea. Bless us, God. Keep us, God. Remind us, God. But most of all, let us be grateful in Jesus' name. Amen.
that you woke us up this morning. We, got, we started this on our way and we're grateful yes. in the midst of this pandemic that we're still on this side of the earth. God, we thank you and we praise you. you. God, we bless your name on today. We are grateful this morning that you have given us light, and not only light, but light that more abundantly. So God, we say thank you this morning. All that you've done and all that you're going to do, God, we just give you praise and we give you honor and glory. For us with a grateful heart, God, we give you praise. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Now, if you've been encouraged by this word on today, we invite you to let us have some information at the end of the program. If you want to send some money and be a part of this ministry and bless it with a financial offering, we, uh, you can do that through Give Love Buy. You can also put a check in the mail or some offering in the mail. It's linked to 17401 Joseph Garbo, 48212. Hopefully you've been blessed and hope you've been encouraged. First in Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen.